Hello, everyone. Welcome to Procore Community Meetings Breakout Session. Uh, we're so glad to have all of our attendees joining us today for Virtual Groundbreak 2021. Uh, before we begin, I do want to show our forward-looking statements. In essence, this slide says that you should not place undue reliance on forward-looking statements as predictions of future events. Uh, and with that said, let me formally introduce myself. My name is Alex Williams. I am the community manager here at Procore. I've been at Procore for about four years and have been leading and managing Procore community for the past two years. Uh, I have a passion to help build the global construction community to provide a space for everyone in the industry to collaborate, learn, and inspire one another. I'm humbled and thrilled to have the opportunity to facilitate this exciting discussion today. Uh, if you watched Tui's keynote this morning, he announced our latest community program to help connect everyone in construction, that being Procore Community Meetings. Now, the goal of today's breakout session is to explain what Procore Community Meetings are, uh, where they're taking place, what happens during these meetings, what it's like to lead your own group, and how to become a community leader. Now, before we get into some of those details, I will say it is my pleasure to welcome and introduce you to four of our top community leaders who currently lead Procore community groups around the United States. So I'm gonna have them introduce themselves. And so let's start with Amy. Hi, Alex, thank you. Amy Millette with Gardner Builders. I have been in the industry for almost 25 years. My role at Gardner is lead project coordinator, and I currently lead the Minneapolis, Minnesota community group. Awesome. And April, how about you? Hi, my name is April Brown, and I work for Ton and Blank Construction as a process improvement manager. I've been in the industry for over 20 years, and I lead the Indianapolis community group. Beautiful. Austin, you're next. Hello, everyone. My name is Austin Garcia. I'm a BIM slash technology manager with MB2A Group here in Miami, and I've been in the industry for about eight years, and I, I lead the Miami slash Florida Procore Community Group. Awesome. Michelle, last but not least. Thank you, Alex. My name is Michelle Payless with Graycore. I'm a business excellence manager and also a diversity, equity, and inclusion lead. I've been in the industry for 20 years, and I lead the Chicago Community Group. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. So before we begin asking our panel some questions about Procore Community Meetings, I want to define what community meetings actually are. Procore Community Meetings are member-led, face-to-face sessions where you can build your network and collaborate with your peers that either share your specialty, your zip code, or both. So another way of putting it is like this. There are meetings, these are meetings for Procore users by Procore users. And let me clarify, when we say face-to-face, -face, we mean that community meetings can take place both in person or virtually, whichever the group sees fit. Obviously with the pandemic this past year, uh, our groups have been primarily meeting virtually, even though I think we all prefer and look forward to returning to in-person meetings. So with that said, the next question we wanna answer is this, where are community meetings currently being held? Well, as our panel just mentioned, uh, we have community meetings happening in Chicago and in Miami and in Indianapolis and in Minneapolis, but we're also in Denver and Dallas and Charlotte and Salt Lake City and, and the list goes on. Uh, we even have a meeting for women in construction that brings women from all over the world together. And while most community meetings are associated with cities or regions, we're looking to launch community meetings that really do stretch across professional focuses and interests like Procore admins, health and safety professionals, et cetera. Uh, we're also speaking with a few customers in some international cities right now, so that's really exciting. And what I would encourage every one of you to do is go check out ProCourtCommunityMeetings.com to see when the upcoming meetings are taking place. Feel free to RSVP to the ones you're interested in attending. And if you think you may wanna start a community meeting in your city or around a professional focus, there's a page for you to check out called Become a Community Leader. So with that all out of the way, let's get to the nitty gritty good part of this conversation, our question and answer time with our panel. So we're gonna ask the community leaders a few questions around the community groups they lead, starting with really their length of leadership. So the question that we're gonna start off with Amy is, how long have you been leading a community group in your city? After you, Amy. Sure, Minneapolis has been active since April, 2019. Awesome, and April? Um, Indianapolis has been active since 2019. 
Beautiful. And Austin. Miami has been active since about mid-2020. Perfect. And Michelle. We started the Chicago group in June 2020. Perfect. So what I love about this panel is that we have uh, a few of our leaders who have been leading groups for a while and then a couple newer groups in the mix. So the next question I have for everyone here is why you became a community leader. What motivated you to start a group in your city? Amy? Sure. Um, a few years ago, I was introduced to Procore and really fell in love with the software and how it streamlined so many of our processes in day-to-day -day construction. And the opportunity arose to lead a local community group here in Minneapolis and thought, why not? What a great opportunity to go ahead and bridge between other construction managers, general contractors, our trade partners, and our design partners. And it's just been wonderful. Love that. And April, for you, uh, why did you want to become a community leader? Yeah, um, I'm the Procore lead for my company, and I knew that in order to deliver the best of Procore, it would take collaboration from a network of other companies using Procore. And the shared knowledge is valuable information that when you take it back to your environment and put it into practice, it just helps you become better. Um, leading a community group is also great for professional development and a safe place to practice your public speaking. Um, and those are just a few of the many reasons that I became a community leader. I love that. Austin, how about you? What motivated you to start a group in your city or in your state, I should say? <laughs> right. Well, actually, well, to be completely honest, it wasn't something until our customer success manager, Jess, um, she asked me, she said, hey, would you guys be interested? And of course, you know, as a Procore lead for my company, you know, when I, when I heard that, I saw, I thought to myself, okay, well, it's going to happen with or without me anyway, so might as well be a part of it and have a chance to lead it. And so like April and Amy mentioned, like there all the benefits there are to be, even just participating in it, you know, getting to lead it and getting to, you know, help kind of steer the direction of where things are going is, you know, in, in immense. Awesome. And Michelle, for yourself, why did you want to become a community leader in Chicago? Well, um, at GreatCore, we value learning from others. We are big on that topic, learning. And we have, done, uh, we have done it formally for the last 10 years through our participation in different peer groups with other construction companies. And I personally love it. And leading the Chicago community group with Procore felt like exactly doing that, right? A continuation of keeping learning from others, and an opportunity also to helping other companies implementing Procore, uh, accomplish or achieving the best implementation possible. So we want to learn what has worked for them, what has not, to also accelerate our own learning curve. So yeah, hmm. it's something that we're looking forward. Thank you. Uh, the next question we have, and we'll toss this over to two of our leaders here. What's been the biggest benefit of being a leader so far? Or, or another way I could say this is what keeps you wanting to continue leading? What impact are you seeing? Amy, we're going to start with you. Sure. I would say learning better practices at scheduling meetings and finding relevant content because we do have so many different groups represented within the user group. Um, and just making sure that that content is ready to go, uh, learning actually how to use slides for the first time. Um, that was actually a new skill for me. Um, so those are some of the benefits. And of course, as um, Michelle and April and Austin all alluded to earlier, that public speaking and just being available for everyone in the community that's using Procore. Awesome. And Michelle, for you too, what's been the biggest benefit of being a leader so far? Yeah, well, the group has, has helped me to hone my leadership skills, such as mm -hmm. continuous learning. We talk about that. Uh, communication, absolutely. I think all of us will agree with uh, the idea that, yeah, the community group helps you to hone your communication skills. Team building, that's another big one, especially mm -hmm. when you have new members. You, you're definitely, you are going to to learn how to become a better team builder and relationship building. So that's something that I enjoy a lot. Also, the group has given me uh, the opportunity of serving something greater than myself that I think is, is huge uh, by helping other companies to achieve their best implementation possible. So I, I really enjoy doing that. 
I love that. I love that. Uh, the next question really surrounds structure. And we're going to start off uh, asking April this question, then move to Austin. But uh, what does a normal meeting usually look like? Give us a glimpse into the structure of your meeting, April. Yeah, I co-host the Indianapolis user group with Darla Moore with Thompson Thrift, and we meet quarterly on the second Wednesday of the month from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, our meetings are held at the Salesforce Tower on Monument Circle, which is in the heart of downtown Indianapolis. Um, it's a beautiful location. Our attendees really enjoy it there. Um, a typical meeting consists of some light refreshments. We'll go around the room and do an introduction. Um, then we deep dive into a pro core tool, discuss best practices and how we're all using it a little differently. Um, we will discuss the marketplace and any integrations that are new to the group and, and maybe an integration that we would like to bring a trade partner in to discuss. Um, we will discuss something that's current. For example, pro core groundbreak is coming up. So who all is attending? Everyone, right? Right. And so and then we will um, just spend some time networking and building relationships. Love that. Now, Austin, I'm going to ask you the same question here. I know that a lot of meetings somewhat are structured the same, you know, in essence, but curious from your perspective, you've only held virtual meetings so far. Right. So can you give us a glimpse into what your normal meeting looks like? So actually, similar to April, you know, going into the meeting, I start with a structure that's prepared in case, you know, to see what, what we can talk about and based on resources that the other leaders have shared uh, together. But really what typically happens is the conversation just kind of goes off and I let it continue because to me, the, the best part is just seeing people, you know, genuinely interact and share their, their knowledge and their experience. So I'll have a kind of structure ready to go in case people aren't feeling so up to, to sharing. But usually what happens is everyone just dives deep into the conversation and I just let it go. And then usually it's already, oh, okay, it's time to end. So, you know, a lot of the times it becomes a lot of free flowing and the topics focus on whatever is most prescient to them at the time. So maybe financials that one time or maybe another tool or whatever kind of, you know, events are happening in our market. So it really becomes uh, pretty free flowing. Austin, I love that you just mentioned topics. That's uh, the subject of our next question here. And, and we're gonna start with Michelle. Uh, Michelle, can you share with everybody what some of the topics of conversations your groups like to have? Sure. Yes, in, in our meetings, we discuss the current challenges that each company is facing, and we drill down on the specific details to help them solve the problem. So usually we start the meetings by asking that question, what are your current challenges? And then we drill down and, and you know, that gives us the topic of discussion for the day, because if multiple people are, you know, landing on the same topic, that's what we discuss. Uh, some of the most engaging topics are Procore financials and uh, mm -hmm. specifically budgets is something that I think our group is very big right now. We also uh, like to discuss dashboards and, and a topic also that I've seen very popular is how to gain, how to gain the buy-in and especially for new companies adopting Procore. So yeah, those are the topics. Great. And then April, can you give us uh, some ideas of the few topics your group really likes to discuss? So we really like to discuss deep dives. Um, but one of the things I found most engaging is when we discuss onboarding our field and what that looked like. Um, because a lot of the field users do not attend these groups. I get them in occasionally if we're really getting into something that was more quality and safety, but just how we onboard our field has been a big topic of discussion and you know what that structure looked like. And not just for you know the field, but the office. So onboarding would be a hot topic of discussion and how everyone does that for success. I mean, you really want a successful implementation. So it really helps having everyone to collaborate on that. Um, right. We also like to discuss analytics. Um, that mm. seems to be something really new to construction and, and Procore Analytics, um, my company is using that. And so I'm able to give insight, others are using it as well. Um, and we just kind of discuss, you know, how that works um, in today's construction environment using KPIs, you know, not just having information on spreadsheets, but actually having that information live and to help you guide um, decisions. So it's all real-time information and something instead of working in history, we're trying to be a little more proactive now. So 
Oh, I love that. I, before I started the community here at Procore, I was a customer success manager. And time and time again, you know, people always come to me during business reviews and they go, Alex, listen, I know how to upload drawings. I know how to create an RFI. I want to know how other people like me are using some of these tools. And the two primary ones you both just mentioned from Procore Financials to onboarding your field team, and those questions come up all the time. And so to know that there's leaders like yourselves leading groups that really address those questions and get a variety of input from different teams uh, is invaluable. So I love that around topics. Uh, the next question that I personally love, I think we all do, is when it comes to stories. And we're gonna start with Amy on this one, but Amy, you've got a great story that I'd love for you to share about something that happened at your group or great things that happened through your meetings. Sure. I think one thing that I absolutely love is that we have staff that attends our Procore community group in Minneapolis. They are from a college that's south of the metro. And just knowing how they are helping their students learn to use construction technology, specifically Procore, in their day-to-day -day learning is very exciting for me because I'm very passionate about bringing more people into the industry and knowing that they are setting that groundwork for them to be so, success so successful when they come out of college. Already having that Procore knowledge is just going to be so much better for everybody in this industry. It's great from recruiting to employment. It looks great on a resume. And I just love that they are taking part in our community group and teaching that to their students. I love that so much. Thank you for sharing that story. Um, Michelle, you have a story around some cross-company collaboration that I'd love for you to share. Yeah, so, so the Chicago community group, we have general contractors. We also have subcontractors, trade partners. Um, that attend regularly our meetings. And, and that's very exciting for us because uh, our company, 100% of our work is subcontracted. So, so that's really interesting. So most recently, I think in our last meeting, we had a subcontractor member. Uh, he brought up a challenge that he's facing with Procore. And uh, that challenge was related to, you know, some of the specific tools that he's using. And he was he brought up the question to a general contractors about an idea that he had to improve the way that he was using Procore. So if we, he brought up that idea to the general contractors to see if they would be willing to support that idea to, yeah, to help him ease the implementation of it a little bit, the use in his company. So all the general contractors, they say yes uh, to mm -hmm. the idea of helping him. Uh, what well, he was, he had a little bit of his doubts because he thought like, well, maybe this is, they may have to do a little bit of extra work on something, but they were willing to help. And that was, that was a really, really nice, a really nice experience that we had that cross collaboration. So now moving forward, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to, to having a little bit more of that, that collaboration amongst our group. I love that. And that's one of the primary benefits of community meetings are getting people from different company types that all use Procore, subcontractor, owner, general contractor, engineer in the same room together to discuss how they can best collaborate on a project. Love that story, Michelle. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, the last question we have, and I think this is what a lot of people think about when either attending a meeting or starting their own is around how you get people to share. Uh, we've, I'm gonna toss this over to Austin first. Uh, Austin, has it been difficult to get people to share best practices with one another during your meetings? Let's start there. Well, so yes and no. Really the, the hardest part is just to get people talking at first sometimes because everyone is a little shy. They just kind of want to listen. And so you just, like actually in one of our first meetings, I remember you know sending text messages to my old colleagues at all the companies <laughs> who were attending say, hey, you know, jump in here, start talking. Um, but really what happens is once someone starts, then it just flows super organically. Like in our last meeting, we had one uh, one person who asked questions about what, how people were doing their their contracts with DocuSign, and then someone else immediately go went into the, how they were using custom solutions and and like they went through the whole process. And so that was like a whole twenty minute conversation on its own. So really, it's wow. sometimes people get shy at the beginning, but once the conversation starts getting uh, flowing, then everyone starts sharing, and it's you know it's really great. Right, it's like a snowball effect, just exactly. keep building and building. Um, April, I'm going to ask you the same question, but from a different angle. You know, you're bringing people together who are oftentimes competing with one another 
you know, uh, in the same city, you know, so does it, does it make it difficult to get people to share? I've not found it difficult to get others to share. Um, I have competitors that attend our community meetings and contributing to the conversation of best practices and using Procore. Um, no proprietary information gets shared or discussed. Um, I've had competitors do deep dives. Um, we are all there for the benefit of just knowing how to better use Procore. Hmm. Um, another benefit of having competitors continually engage is locally we use a lot of the same specialty contractors. So if the general contractors are getting on board with using similar best practices, then that makes it easier for the specialty contractor to use Procore across multiple companies and projects. So it's, it's just a relaxed environment and atmosphere and everyone is welcomed. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. And, and really, I, I can't thank you enough for not only sharing today, but for leading your respective groups across the country. Um, I say this with all sincerity, you're some of my favorite people I get to work with at Procore. Um, and I know that Procore is really grateful for your leadership and impact in the industry. So thank you for your time and your insight. This is a joy and a pleasure. Um, and lastly, I just want to encourage everyone attending today's breakout session to, again, check out ProcoreCommunityMeetings.com. There are some upcoming meetings already scheduled there by some of the leaders here, too, that you can RSVP um, to for, you know, those upcoming meetings, uh, along with if you are interested in starting your own group, there is a page for you to fill out a form to become a community leader as well. Um, on that page, you'll, you'll find information about what Procore provides to support your group. For instance, you know, we, we provide a small budget for refreshments and snacks. We send some Procore swag to different meetings, and we're continuing to build out this program in that way, um, along with some additional benefits of becoming a community leader. So thank you for your time and your interest. We hope to engage with you more at Procore Community Meetings. Thanks so much, everyone.